Welcome to today's webinar, everyone. Um, it's, um, we're going to cover how to turbocharge your lead conversion in 2021. My name is Maddie, and I'll be the moderator for today's event. Before we begin, I'd like to briefly explain the format of today's webinar. Up first, uh, we'll have CEO and founder of JTF Marketing, James T. Fletcher, talking about his favorite topic of marketing automation and how it plays a vital role in lead conversion in 2021. After James, um, Ilan Kassan, the CEO and co-founder of XC.ai, will explain how artificial intelligence can transform the way you convert and engage leads. Towards the end, uh, we'll take questions, um, any questions that you might have. So during the webinar, please use the uh, Q&A um, panel that you can find in the middle of your screen uh, to post any of your questions. Just to let you know, we are recording the session and the recording will be made available via our website and will also be emailed out to registrants when the session is completed. So now let's begin. Thanks, Maddie, and thank you, Ilan, for joining us today. Um, so to kick off, uh, marketing automation has been around for some time now. And actually what we've seen is this new uh, stage that we're at after we've got the technology, we've been super excited and optimistic about the change. Uh, and then we get into this place where we get stuck and we're doing the same old routine time and time again. So a lot of us consider that to be batch and blast emails where we're targeting an audience and firing something out the door. We then have this uh, conscious uh, that we need to change and we need to evolve the way in which we're marketing. Uh, and a lot of companies now see marketing automation as a must have. Actually, the market is expected to be around 14 billion by 2024. Uh, and I know some of you are in this journey in some shape or form. One of the biggest challenges we see across marketing automation is actually understanding what the strategy should look like. How do we apply it in the best way to our business? And importantly, how do we get the all important return we're looking for? If we look at the top five challenges within marketing automation as a space of its own, uh, expertise, education, training is an area which is super underfunded. Uh, and of, of course, we all start with the vendor training at the beginning, a couple of days or three days, intense information crammed into our heads. And then we get back to our desk and go, great, I'm going to do that. How do I do that again? And so we forget. So we've got to have ongoing training, expertise and knowledge. The second area is integrations. So integrating within your technology stack, not only uh, from a marketing perspective, but backend systems in the business. If we really want to understand our customer, engage with them throughout that customer experience and through that customer journey. Data hygiene is a big problem within marketing databases, often siloed, often disconnected, often no one with the responsibility to control and improve that data. And as we say in the world of marketing automation, if you've got crap data, you get crap results. When it comes to ROI and reporting, everybody's ambition to be able to attribute every single lead to the best source that worked or didn't work to improve and optimize their marketing channels. And only 59% of marketers are tracking campaign ROI and 58% tracking the channel ROI uh, in uh, Salesforce's latest marketing report. Now, something quite fascinating around ROI and reporting is ultimately it comes back to the feedback loop. And this leads me on to the final challenge within marketing automation, which is sales follow-up, one of the topics we're going to get into detail today. Uh, and again, this is the age-old argument that hasn't changed in decades. Sales doesn't follow up or sales thinks our leads are rubbish or whatever it might be. So we've got this flawed model within marketing, which we're throwing loads of stuff in the hopper, lots of money at advertising activities, PR events, whatever it might be. Uh, and we're often not worried about those things that we've just talked about. Data cleanse projects are one off every couple of years when a new marketing director starts and says, what data have we got? What haven't we got? Or deliverability isn't a priority because it's not on the list of you know, optimizing our campaigns, getting better visibility in the inboxes. So whilst we're pumping all this information into our pipeline, ultimately either the tap is closed and our nurture campaigns don't feed uh, enough leads through to our teams, or we're pumping so much at them that they don't see anything, they don't see the priorities. And there's a great conversation here about whether we're overscoring or underscoring our leads, 
Uh, and how do we get this one-to-one -one communication between those leads? And importantly, how do we get to those personalized conversations? I look at this in a very simple way, which is marketing's responsibility is for the entire customer journey. It is important that we have models and marketing programs that align with that customer journey. And importantly, we've got to focus on ensuring we start some conversations. Now, how do we even start this? I mean, this is the great challenge of every sales and marketing team, as I say, for decades, and sh I'm sure decades to come, unless we think about sales and marketing in a different way, unless we think about that feedback loop slightly differently. And this is with great pleasure, I get to introduce uh, Ilan to you guys now to take us through, how can we do this? What is the secret? What is the secret to getting more qualified conversations in our diaries? Uh, and later we'll go through some examples as well. Thank you very much, James, for the introduction. So before I get into how Exceed helps marketing teams with this problem, let's talk a little bit about lead engagement and what a good lead engagement looks like. So first of all, the golden, you know, everybody wants to be able to have a personalized conversation uh, with all your leads. You want to be able to respond to them promptly to all the inquiries or objections they might have. You want to make sure you're following up with them in a persistent and timely fashion. And finally, you want to make sure that you're qualifying them before you hand them over to your sales reps. Because we all know that if there's one thing that sales do not like is unqualified leads. And if they feel that they are talking to um, leads that are not ready for a conversation or just not an ICP. Move on. So in an ideal world, every marketer, if you could have a personalized conversation with every lead, you, you would have it in order to understand where they are in the journey. Are they just doing the initial research? Do they want to talk to somebody? Where exactly are they? You would like to be able to make sure they have all the information they need to move them to the next step of the funnel. You want to be able to follow up and nurture them and guide them through the funnel. And then most important is identify when they're actually ready to talk to sales. But before you hand them over to sales, you want to make sure that you qualify them before it gets to the sales rep. That's a dream of every marketer. But in reality, this is a very manual, slow and expensive process. And it's done today by inside sales reps, BDRs or SDRs, every company calls them something different. And typically what will happen, they will follow up with them with a series of email, but as soon as a lead responds with a question, out of office, um, not, not interested, interested, whatever it is, a human has to open the email, see who responded and figure out what would be the best way to respond. He actually, he's gonna ask himself, is it even worth my time conversing with that lead? And if he's unsure, he might want to follow up with a question, but then he also has to handle objections. And if he does think the lead is ready to talk to a rep, then you have to go and the back and forth and scheduling the meeting with the SDR or the sales rep. So the way companies solve this problem, you can always hire more people to send more emails, but the problem is that you have diminishing returns as you add people. Or what most companies actually do, they do lead prioritization. They use some sort of a lead scoring system and pass over to reps only those leads that score above a certain uh, score. The challenge here is twofold. One is that you're either underscoring your leads and then you're leaving money on the table or you're overscoring your leads and then you're generating noise for your sales reps. Move on. So in reality, what's happening is that, and we have the data and research shows that 71% of leads are never nurtured or followed up properly. They somehow tend to fall between the cracks over maybe one or two attempts. A lot of time is wasted by either chasing unqualified leads or just simply with mundane admin repetitive tasks of communication, communicating with those leads. And finally, uh, speed plays a huge role in how you engage your leads. The longer you wait with a response to an inquiry or an objection reduces your chances of getting that lead into a conversation. And this is where Exceed uh, can help companies. This is a problem that we are solving for our customers. And the way we do it is uh, Exceed is an AI sales assistant. Think of it like a virtual SDR or rep that works alongside your team. 
it seamlessly integrates into your existing workflow and backend systems, whether it's your marketing automation or your CRM. It enrolls those leads into a certain campaign or a playbook and starts engaging them in a two-way conversation. It could be around an inbound lead follow-up, a renewal, a webinar follow-up, maybe reactivation campaign, an upsell from free to paid. There's a various set of playbooks that Exceed comes with out of the box. And the beauty is that during this back and forth conversation, it knows to identify when is a lead once or ready to talk to a human. It will introduce a human, but will, before it does that, it will qualify the lead based on your qualification criteria, hand it over to a human and schedule and book a meeting directly on the reps calendar. So let me give you an example. If you have a lead who said, I wanna see a demo, uh, not yet, <laughs> if your lead wants to see a demo, he might say, uh, if it's a VP at Cisco and it fits your ICP, you might say, sure, let me set you up as a rep and the virtual assistant will go and schedule a meeting. But if it's somebody who is maybe a public domain email, you might want to follow up with a qualification question and based on how he responds, you'll decide, the virtual assistant will decide whether to pass it over to a rep or not. Let me give an example of one of our customers at monday.com. Monday.com is a project management uh, solution. They sell to the mid-market. They get thousands of leads every day. And their challenge is that all their leads are coming into a free trial and they're trying to understand which of those leads need a little bit extra touch from a human in order to convert them to a sale. But they actually have diminishing returns because they cannot talk to every person who's just buying one or two licenses. They only want to talk to those who are buying above 10 licenses. So what they do today, every rep gets about 400 leads every month. They follow up with those, um, the rep follows up with some sort of a cadence with those leads. And then as soon as a lead shows interest to talk to a rep, they qualify him and ask him, hey, how many licenses are you planning to purchase? Anything above 10, we'll schedule a meeting. Anything below that, they will just send them to, a, a, to some sort of a, a self-service page. But obviously they have diminishing returns. They cannot follow with all the leads. Um, next slide. So they, they, they understood that this process is not scalable. So they implemented Exceed. Exceed had unlimited capacity and ensured that all the leads are worked. Our virtual rep was able to identify which one of those leads uh, showed interest in talking to a rep. But before handing it over, they asked a qualification qu uh, criteria and passed over only those who wanted to purchase above 10 licenses. And in fact, because the robots are never get tired, they work 24 by seven, they never complain, they know to follow up when somebody's out of the office or ask to be contacted in a different time, our conversion rate was actually higher than the humans. As a result, a few things. One, we were able to generate 81% more qualified meetings, book more qualified meetings per rep. But more interestingly, we're also able to reduce the cost of acquisition or cost to qualify a lead from 142 to $32. And is that also translated into an increase of 25K ARR per rep per month? Back to you, James. Awesome, thank you very much for that, Ilan. So for, for those of you who've ever met me before, you'll see uh, me talk about Exceed all the time. Uh, and actually, I picked up Exceed now over a year ago, and it absolutely changed the way in which we worked at JTF Marketing. To give you an example, uh, we are a professional services firm who works specifically on marketing automation. And that sale requires some careful attention to detail, a level of trust, a level of understanding of what do I need. Uh, and what we found is we were a growing business that we would hire salespeople, we'd throw them in. Uh, to the deep end and say, well, great, here's a bunch of contacts, go and explore them, go and find uh, the next hot prospect for us to work with. Uh, and ultimately they come back with nothing or very little. Uh, and that was because ultimately when we are selling professional services or a considered sale purchase, it requires a relationship, it re requires a piece of trust. And so what we did was actually implement uh, Exceed in place of our business development people, let's say, and skip that process so that the first conversation you have with us, you're actually having with someone who's qualified to talk about your needs and your requirements. And that is again, an interesting use case for how you might apply 
these virtual bots. Again, if we talk about um, you know, sales activity and how sales deal with inbound leads, they either don't see them, they cherry pick what they wanna see, or even they work to the three strike rule. I've called once, I've emailed, I've called again, there's no luck, therefore I stop. Uh, and that is what we saw across a, a range of organizations uh, where XE can play a vital role. I mean, some other use cases as well, and Ilan's touched on some of them, which are really fascinating. Again, it can be inbound follow-up. So if someone's filling out your brochure download, for example, you drop it into a sequence in Exceed in order to start that follow-up process, in order to accelerate the process. Uh, and again, as Ilan rightly says, you know, you're remembering that you've got to follow up with that person. Again, I, like every human, falls foul of this. I get priorities that change every day, every minute. Therefore, I forget to follow up with those leads or those prospects or those conversations. By dropping it into this process, if someone says, hey, follow up with me in a few weeks' time, I don't have to worry about it anymore because uh, Exceed is taking care of that. Um, equally, we have online trading programs that we launched uh, during uh, COVID, uh, and we have mentoring sessions as part of that. Uh, and so as a way of booking those mentoring sessions, we also use Exceed. When the data changes in our marketing automation system, we trigger these sequences in order to go and follow up these people and say, hey, I'd love to have a conversation with you. Well done for completing that uh, assignment or it's time for your mentoring session. Um, I think the, the, the greatest piece for me uh, as a marketer is a, probably a data geek is probably the right words. Uh, we have a lot of feedback from Exceed compared to what we get from salespeople. And time and time again, and Elan, feel free to comment on this. Uh, we hear the same thing from every marketing team. Oh, we don't really get feedback from sales. I mean, is that not the most common conversation we hear uh, when we're talking to people about lead quality, lead scoring, you know, uh, how we might uh, do something with these leads and understand the return on investment? Um, so today, I mean, we've, we've rocketed through this, which is great because I'm a lover of short, punchy webinars, you know, take 30 minutes out, out of your day rather than a whole hour. Uh, I'd love to move on now to some questions. If anybody's got any, Maddie rightly said at the beginning, let's throw them in that chat panel. Let's uh, start some discussion and debate around what can we do with this tool? What are some examples? And importantly, how do we, how do we go from here? So we have our first question from Alex Alexander. Uh, do you need to assign slash hire a person dedicated to manage the Exceed system? Is that part of the cost we need to consider when implementing a conversational AI tool? Right, let me take this one to you. Yeah, so thank you very much, uh, Alexander. So there's two parts to it. One is a setup and setup typically requires, uh, we have a customer success who will sit down with you and help you um, set this up. Also, uh, you can work with James company. He also uh, implements Exceed for uh, uh, customers. And typically the setup is quite easy. It's integration into your CRM, which is out of the box. You then have to identify the type, which use case you want to start with Exceed. We have out of the box sequences ready, which we provide you a way to fine tune the language and, and some of the copy to meet your specific um, requirements and, and your tone of voice and whatever you're selling. Um, also qualification criteria. So that can take maybe one or two days. It's not a big uh, deal. And then once the system is work, works, this is not 100% because of course uh, conversations can get dicey. And sometimes when the bot or the AI is unsure what to do, it might require somebody to get in and approve a message or maybe respond on behalf. So I would say that uh, the setup is uh, several days. Again, depends on, the, on your complexity. Uh, and then I would say it's a few hours, but sometimes can take a few calendar days. And then ongoing basis, you might need to uh, pop in exceed uh, for a few minutes every day. I don't think you have to hire anybody specific, no, but probably somebody from your marketing or marketing ops team has to drop into exceed, look at the reports, maybe approve uh, once, uh, you know, once in a while, one or two messages. Um, so definitely it's uh, cheaper than hiring a full-time uh, sales development rep. So there's no really a uh, problem. Uh, so there's not, it's not really an ongoing uh, burden to uh, manage Exceed. Absolutely. And I'll give you again, Alexander, my experience of setting up Exceed. So uh, 
I managed to get it up and integrated into our CRM and Marketo within a matter of hours, as Ilan says. Uh, the part that took most learning, uh, and it's the same as you would, uh, I guess, pick up as you go through the learning process as a salesperson, is what works in conversation. What questions can I ask? How can I qualify? And often, if you don't have those documented as part of your sales process, it can be a challenge to, uh, to get to that point. Uh, luckily, uh, I have a lot of these conversations, as you would imagine. So it, it was much easier for me to write it onto uh, an email as if I was writing to a customer. Uh, and again, the evolution and the optimization takes a little bit of time. But the analytics you gain from Exceed in terms of what conversation starters worked or didn't work are pretty, pretty awesome, actually, because you can A-B test them. You can understand what works, what doesn't. What I found is, uh, on average, we would interact with maybe one in every 300 leads. Uh, to Ilan's point, you might be prompted to come in in the box asking for some help. Uh, it's, again, a, a really fascinating way of accelerating uh, the way in which you work. Thank you both. Um, and Alex actually had a follow-up question that I believe um, you've covered yeah. now. Um, so let's take another one. Um, we see here, um, what is one thing you would do today to improve the conversion rate of your marketing campaigns? I'll take a stab at this one first. So for me, the most important part is absolutely starting with data quality. And actually this is a learning curve also that we had with Exceed. Uh, we had a bunch of data that had been sitting around in our database for probably about a year, 18 months. And we went, okay, how, is the, how do we tackle this? Where do we go from here? Because we've got this data, we think that they are the right people. So we put it in an exceed sequence. Uh, that would be the one thing I would consider is the data hygiene part, but now to get geek out again on exceeds and exceed technology. Uh, what we actually did is we put that uh, list of people into an exceed sequence to re-engage with them if they've been engaged with before or start a new conversation. Exceed managed to cut through 60% of that data in the space of about two months uh, and fed back to us that we didn't have the right people or people had left the business or they're uh, out of the office or maternity leave, whatever it might be, in order to then feed that information back to us and say, hey, uh, you know, we're going to keep this data here and we're going to keep processing it until we get to that point. So that would be my number one is focus on data quality because you can't get conversions if you don't have uh, good quality data. Great, thank you. Now, another one here um, says, you spoke of creative tension. How do you unlock that deadlock? That's uh, it's a great question. Uh, it's definitely one of the hardest parts, right? When it comes to marketing automation, marketing technology, uh, and even sales technology in this mix, you've got to have a clear directive. What are you trying to get to? My view is we should always be focusing on revenue marketing. So we're looking at what are the different milestones in my customer journey? How many people do I have in each one of those buckets? And how do I improve the conversion rate between them? So if we think about uh, nurture marketing, if we think about lead generation, we're creating these leads, we're, we're creating them into our database. And then what? We use lead scoring, we use lead nurturing, we expect them to download more stuff. And we create this noise that gets in front of the customer, but doesn't necessarily convert them. Um, so again, trying to focus on that conversion really helps. Uh, again, having the visibility of the data really helps you understand which campaigns do I need to go and build and where, where are they in this life cycle of the customer? And the most common thing we see is marketers are absolutely amazing at creating leads and not so great at converting them. Or if they are converting them, as we mentioned earlier, they're often then left in the sales pot doing nothing, not recycled, or, or maybe not, it depends. There's kind of that scale of everybody, right? Everybody's different, the maturity is different across those uh, industries as well. Uh, technology, of course, software as a service companies are super tech savvy uh, and advanced with the way they use marketing automation and even sales technology. Uh, you know, we work with some banks and some manufacturing companies who are maybe a little behind the curve, but ultimately aiming to get there. So again, I, I guess if I summarize, and I'm not famous for being concise, uh, the one thing that you can do to unlock that tension 
is absolutely get a marketing strategy down on paper that is focused on using technology for the customer journey. Thanks, James. Uh, one for Elan now. Um, does Exceed only do email follow-up? How does it work with other marketing channels? Great question. So Exceed actually is an end-to-end -end solution that looks at the funnel from the point where a lead visits your website. So we also provide a chat to do the initial engagement, uh, qualification, and even book the meeting directly from the chat on your website. Then follow up over email. So we do the asynchronous uh, email follow-up that happened afterwards or just work your existing leads over email. And we also support um, SMS, mainly for B2C use cases when people want to engage on SMS. And in each one of those challenges, each one of those challenge, cha channels, we're able to reach out, uh, handle objections, qualify, and book meetings for, uh, and book meetings directly on the reps calendar. Thanks, Milan. Um, either of you can, uh, if you can tell me a bit more about how lead scoring plays its part in this automated model. Uh, do you want me to take a stab at it, uh, James? Yeah, go for it, Alana. I love your view on this. <laughs> okay, so I uh, have this new uh, framework, which I think about lead scoring. I call it uh, um, underscore and uh, uh, underscore or overscore. Okay, so lead scoring is probably uh, the best solution that is available today, and it has a lot of value because it uses thermographics and personal information plus engagement data to try and understand if that lead is ready for a conversation. Now, the challenge there is that uh, if you overscore a lead, you think this lead is great and ready and could just be a student or somebody, um, you're, gonna send a, you're gonna send your rep somebody who's just not conversation ready, you're gonna create frustration. But I think even more dangerous is when you underscore a lead because that's a real, so one is a waste of time, the other one is a missed opportunity, okay? And sometimes it's known that uh, 16, sorry, 19% of leads want to have a conversation with sales in the awareness phase and 60% in the consideration because it's part of their learning process. So if you purely use lead scoring, you run the risk of missing out on those opportunities. So we exceed kind of complements that is that before you go, there's two. So one, if you overscore before you actually send it to a rep, you can use exceed to identify real intent and qualify. And for the leads that are underscored, you can use a ski, you can use XT to try and figure out if somebody is ready for conversation and then qualify them. So I see it as very complimentary, but it's applied a little different if it's the lead is underscored or overscored. Yeah, and I'll give you my view now on this because I have a love-hate relationship with scoring. I think it is a great tool, but I also hate it. Uh, and I hate it for one reason, one reason only, is we do exactly that in marketing. We give things a score. They're in a bucket, it's black and white. And actually it's really difficult to then understand whether that is correct or not. My opinion is on firmographic and demographic scoring, if we know we don't want those people, we should be removing them from our database in the first place. When we think about marketing automation tools with pain per contact, so actually why are we keeping the data if it's not right for us? Get rid of it, get it out of the database, delete it. Uh, and that scary word for marketing is delete, get rid of the database, only focus on the people that are important. So actually then what becomes more engaging and more useful for the salesperson is actually which products has the person engaged with, which behaviors have they shown that are useful? They've clicked on 10 web pages, doesn't tell me anything. Which web page? Why was it valuable? Which product does it relate to? So when I talk about lead scoring, I try and steer it to product of interest scoring rather than am I the good fit for you or not? Because actually based on your win-loss data, you should be able to figure that out in data hygiene rules and say, this person isn't right for me, get rid of them, see you later. Um, so that's my view. But uh, as I say, I have a love-hate relationship. Uh, and the best thing for me is always when we get a project to work on for lead scoring to answer that very question that Elan poses, which is how do we get the leads, the right leads to the salesperson? It's the same challenge every time. How do we, where do we start? Thank you very much both. Um, 
in line, and I think that's the question for you. Yeah, I uh, see. What size business is Exceed most appropriate for? So I don't think it's um, necessarily a size of business, but rather I would look at um, number of leads. So I'll say like that. One, are you have a considered purchase and your sales process needs humans to talk with the lead or the, sorry, the prospect before you close it. And it's more about volume of leads. If you're having a handful of leads a month and you have enough capacity to follow up, you don't really have a problem. We typically like working with companies who have above, you know, 150, 200 leads, kind of new inbound leads per month. But what really matters is how much you have in your database and how much you want to engage every month and the ratio between that and your number of reps. So we have anywhere from, you know, company like James is using it, which is a relatively small company up to public companies in the market. Thank you very much. Um, another one here. How does Exceed work with companies that already have a chat client in place on their website? So first of all, uh, our chat is optional. Uh, actually, a lot of our clients have a chat from Intercom or Drift or some other player. And they would just use Exceed for the email follow-up or just working existing leads in their database. So it's very, very complimentary. You don't have to use our chat. But what we have seen, the pattern that we have seen is that once they use Exceed for email, they then the next step is to replace the existing chat with Exceed because it comes as part of the package and it's also nicely integrated into the whole system and into our email follow-up. But most of our, not most, but a lot of our companies already using existing chat and that's okay. I'm not, our goal is not to replace any existing chat. Thank you. And um, another one here, how do you know if somebody is ready for a conversation? Okay, so uh, the best, because of the, the obvious use cases, right? When you're following up with somebody who wants to see a demo or free trial or whatever it is, you can follow up with them. So you know they're ready. What you really want to do now is qualify them. So that's an easy part. Um, when you're nurturing somebody, we call it conversational nurturing. And the way we do it is in, in, in contrast to traditional nurturing, where you're sharing with them content and sending them to the website to download and to engage with the content online. When you write a conversational email, you're basically uh, trying to get a conversation going, but you're not doing a hard sale. So let me give you an example. Let's say somebody downloaded a piece of content like an ebook. So in a conversational nurturing campaign, you would follow up with them and say, hey, thank you very much for downloading the ebook. Here's a copy in case you missed it. Let me know, uh, I hope you find it fruitful. Let me know if you have any questions. Okay, so you're not, it's a soft sale. You, you're basically opening the door for a conversation. Now, two weeks later, you might come back and say, hey, following up on your previous email, wanted to make sure if you had time to read the case study or the ebook, and wanted to know if you have any questions. And by the way, I thought you might uh, find this piece of content interesting. So you're always keeping it open for the person on the other side to respond, whether he wants questions or whether he wants to talk with somebody. In the traditional marketing, it's almost impossible to do because you can't uh, do that at scale. You need somebody to actually go in and read all the responses and see who's ready and who's not ready. We can automate this. And when somebody says, yeah, sure, would love to talk to somebody, you can then go ahead and say, great, no problem assign it to a person, or if you want to qualify and add another qualification there, you can do that. Does Exceed replace marketing automation? So the short answer is uh, not yet, because <laughs> marketing automation does many other things. It, it does lead scoring, it tracks engagement on the website, it, it, it tracks, um, it tracks engagement and events and other type of venues and Exceed doesn't do that. Exceed today is very, very complementary to your marketing automation. Uh, you know, maybe in the future as we progress and as Exceed grows, we might um, add uh, more marketing automation like functionality, but right now uh, it cannot stand alone as a full replacement. It's a super interesting question actually when we think about it, because actually, as I mentioned in the beginning, what I see uh, or the alignment between the two technologies is marketing automation is about broadcasting that message, making the big noise, the big bang, the, the brand awareness piece. Uh, when we think about conversion technology like Exceed, it is really about getting those qualified conversations. 
Now, there probably is use cases, and Ilan, you may or may not have seen this uh, within your client base, smaller companies who don't have a vast marketing automation budget. Uh, as we all know, these tools are super expensive uh, in the marketing automation space. So maybe they would use it as a uh, self-serving uh, tool for their for, for inbound inquiries, right? So let's take an architect as a good example. It's a high value sale. Uh, they may get a series of inbound inquiries about different projects. Uh, therefore, how, how could they use it? They could process all inbound inquiries with qualification questions, you know, what's your budget? When is the timeline you're working to, et cetera, et cetera. Managing that inbound whilst the architect, uh, he, he or her, may be actually just filtering those and choosing the ones which they're going to be able to work on, whether it's it fits in my time frame or it doesn't, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, really interesting question. Actually, I would like to see in the future, and Ilan, maybe this is the, the day when you get to sell your business, uh, is the two merge together. Uh, I see them working really nicely together. You know, again, what I, and I guess maybe this is a question for you, Alan. The, the core users of your platform, are they sales or are they marketing? Marketing. Because, and I'll explain to you why. We, by the way, we have, it's not that we don't have sales. And if it sells, it's typically uh, the top of the funnel of, fair, of sales, which is more kind of the SDR team. But there is something, um, the dynamic that we are seeing right now in the market, I'm providing marketing capabilities that they're not able to do today because marketing don't own a lot of headcount, right? They cannot do it. I'm giving them a new way of doing something and a capability that was never available for them. With sales, it's always, oh, I can do it with people, but Exceed can uh, help me scale. And it's always a little more of a tricky, dicey proposition. The mature uh, sales organizations understand it and have no problem. I would say the immature or, lack, or typically a fi find it a little bit competitive or maybe feel, feel uneasy with that. But most of our customers are marketers. Thanks for that, Ivan. Uh, we have another question here. Yeah. Um, can we use Exceed without the self-service meeting booking feature? Of just course. assessing maturity or interest of a lead by automating emails and benefiting from feedback understanding. Absolutely. The short answer is yes. Sometimes we meet customers who maybe have a calendar or some other uh, scheduling, and sometimes they don't want to facilitate the scheduling. All they want to do is identify when the lead is conversation ready and simply hand it over to a human, and the human can take it off over there. So our scheduler is obviously an option. Uh, I'll give a little anecdote here that. Um, Companies who use Exceed can actually take the scheduler and use it similar like Calendly. So we kind of, uh, I like to think of us as uh, um, we incorporate Calendly into Calendly-like functionality. Yes, I don't, I don't want to say that we are as sophisticated as them, but we also provide a link that reps can just share with prospects and have them um, schedule meetings directly. So the short answer is you do not have to use Exceed. We can only facilitate the introduction to the rep without the meeting on the calendar. Yeah, and no, actually there's something, uh, you know, I'm going to take you guys back down memory lane here a year ago when I first heard about Exceed and I had a, a demo from Milan and his team and I come off the call going, I need this piece of technology. I need it. And it's the first thing that I've experienced since marketing automation where you sat there and okay, this changes everything. This really changes the way in which we're working. It makes us more efficient. It makes us more automated. Uh, and again, I think that's the, the kind of process we're all looking for here, right? How do we make, how do we streamline these processes between sales and marketing handover, as well as uh, getting more qualified conversations, getting to revenue faster, and ultimately measuring that success. Thanks very much, folks. Well, that's it for the questions. Um, so thank you both very much for the session today. I think it was very insightful and hopefully you all have uh, picked up some tips and tricks on how to improve your conversion in 2021. If you do have any questions or um, want further information, uh, you can get in touch with us. Again, the recording will be sent after the session has ended and hope to see you again soon. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Thanks.